Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we will discuss the internal rate of return known as IRR. Now it's very helpful that you have learned net present value NPV before you learn IRR because IRR in a sense it's an extension of NPV and both IRR and NPV are capital budgeting tools. It, they help us evaluate whether a company should undertake a capital project, a big ticket spending. So at its core, the IRR is the discount rate that makes NPV equal to zero. So that's why I said you have to know what NPV is. So the when NPV equal to zero, that rate of return is the same thing as the internal rate of return. Because remember what we did in NPV, we discounted all the cash flow. At whatever rate we happen to discount the cash flow and the MPV equal to zero, the discount rate equal to the internal rate of return. So it represents the breaking point because NPV equal to zero where the present value of the future cash flows equal to the initial investments or the outflows. Simply put, IRR equal to MPV equal to zero. So when MPV equal to zero, it's equal to the IRR. Now, Bear in mind, unlike NPV, which measure profitability in absolute dollar term, remember when we looked at NPV, we looked at the dollar amount, like 65,000 positive NPV, or 3 million positive NPV, or 300,000 positive NPV. So they all a dollar amount. The internal rate of return is a percentage. So it's easier when you're comparing project to compare using IRR because IRR tells you what's the percentage rate of return. Obviously, you want the better percentage rate of return, making it, making it easier to compare across different projects. Now, remember MPV when we said when we have two projects, what we talked about, we said, well, if they have the same initial investments or the same outflows, well, we just have to compare the higher MPV is better. But sometimes they may not have, which we will have to go to the profitability index. But for IRR, all we have to do is compare percentages, which is much easier. So MPV provide a dollar value of a project profitability. IRR express this profitability, profitability as a, you guessed it, percentage, it's a rate, offering an intuitive benchmark for evaluating return. So what, what are we going to do in this session? We're gonna dive down, dive a little bit deeper into the IRR its component, the formula, how does it work, so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Hello, my name is Farhat. You are here because you are either an accounting student, a finance student, or someone who's studying for their CMA or CPA exam. Great, you are looking for some additional help, and we can help you. I strongly encourage you to visit my website, farhatlectures.com. I offer additional lectures, resources, including PowerPoint slides, multiple choice questions, in some circumstances, exercises, and true-false questions. Our material is aligned with your CPA review courses, with your CMA review courses, with your college courses. I offer a risk-free trial that you can try to find out whether my website can help you or not. If you find it helpful, you subscribe, you keep your subscription. If not, you cancel and your risk is free. If you like this recording, if you like my lectures, you would like what's on the website. Give me a chance to help you with your college courses as well as professional certification. I hope to see you on the website. So the IRR formula, we can, we can express it this way. When the sum of cash flows discounted at a certain rate of return minus the, the initial investments equal to MPV equal to zero. So when this formula equal to zero, we found our IRR. So when we take all the cash flow, inflow, outflow, and we discount them, we take all the cash flow, net cash flow, discount them at some percentage minus the initial investment, basically computing MPV, except when this rate, when this rate equal makes MPV equal to zero, we found our IRR. So you adjust IRR until MPV equal to zero. So you could just kind of keep on using 
different trait using trial and errors, but you don't have to do that. You would use a calculator, a, a financial calculator, or you could Excel sheet or a software. So a positive MPV, if we have a positive MPV, well, the, it means the project earns more than the required rate of return when we have a positive MPV. Negative MPV means the project earns less than the required rate of return. Well, MPV equal to zero, break even point where inflow matches outflow. This is what MPV equal to zero, the IRR. We are meeting, this is the internal rate of return for the project. Now, here's what we assume when we compute the IRR. Look, we took all the cash flow and we divide them by one rate. It assumes that cash inflow are reinvested at the IRR rate, which may not always be aligned in real world condition. Because in real world condition, the rate of return changes from year to year with the company. When you're computing the IRR, you cannot take into that into account, which is that's one of the weaknesses we will see later with an IRR. So this is one of the limitation, but it does not diminish its value as a decision-making tool. Let's start again with simple examples and we'll start to build up. For example, if the IRR of a project is 12%, let's assume we found out that the IRR is 12%. If the required rate of return for a company is eight, then we will accept the project because the company wants to earn eight. This project is earning 12. Our internal rate of return is 12. We accept. If, if our required rate of return is 15 and the IRR is 12, then we don't accept. This simplicity in comparison, what makes IRR a favorite matrix for evaluating investment project because you're comparing percentages to percentages. Compute the IRR. Tell me at which rate my MPV equal to zero. Then the company will have the required rate of return, what they want to earn, and they will compare those two. So the IRR that gave MPV zero, compare that to the re required rate of return. As we said, if it's 12 and you want to earn eight, we're good. If it's 12 and you want to earn 15, don't undertake the project based on IRR. Let's take a look at a more advanced illustration. Let's imagine you are investing $100 today and you would receive $100, $110 a year from now. Come on, you tell me how much you earn now. Well, you earned $10. Could you compute what's your rate of return? What's your internal rate of return? Very simple, 10%. You divide what you earned over the 100 and this is your IRR 10%. Then you would compare this IRR to the company's required rate of return. If the company wants to earn... 8% on their investment, good, we did great. We will accept this $110 project. If the company wants to earn $112, then this, this is not an acceptable project. Let's take a look at another example with multiple cash flow. Now consider a more complex scenario. Scenario: You invest $100 today, you receive $60 one year from now, and another $60 another year from now. So let's set up the formula to compute IRR. How do we compute IRR? It's the cash outflow, the sum of those, divided them by 1 plus some rate of return minus the initial investment. So what we do is now, obviously, as I told you, you would input this in an Excel and it will give you the answer or financial calculator or you would use trial and errors. But here I'm going to give you the answer. The answer that will give you NPV equal to zero, it's 13.07. What does that mean? It means this project has an internal rate of return of, let's just say, 13%. That's all we have to know. Now, what can we do? We could compare this IRR to the required rate of return, how much the company wants to earn. If they want to earn 15, well, that's not a good project. If the company accepts 12%, then it's a good project. So that's why it's easier to use because it tells you at a percentage wise. This shows the IRR provides a useful benchmark to evaluate the profitability over time. Now, once again, financial calculator, Excel or trial and error will find IRR for you. Now, IRR versus MPV. So again, let's go through it one more time. When you look at it initially, it looks like they may appear the same, but each serve a unique purpose. Remember, NPV, looking at dollars. IRR, you're looking at a percentage. That's something you have to be familiar with. Now, both lead, usually lead to the same decision under these conditions. So yes, so they both lead to the same whether accept or reject, as long as 
Cash flows are conventional. It means a single outflow followed by inflows. If that's the case, they would always lead to the same decision. And projects are independent. Whether you accept one does not impact and gather. So you're dealing with one project and you don't have to worry about the other ones. It's, it's acceptable regardless of the other decision. Under those conditions, if IRR is a yes, MPV is a yes. If MPV is a no, IRR is a no. So under those conditions, they give you the same the same answer. If these conditions are not met, MPV is typically more reliable as it's considered the scale, the size of the investment. So if these are not the same, if those two conditions are not met, then you would go, you would default to MPV. Now let me show you, let me visualize, I, I want to show you IRR versus MPV because it's very important that you understand what an IRR is in internal rate of return like what is it exactly how does it work so i'm going to build this graph from scratch so just ignore what's on the graph so here's what's going to happen the x axis which is the x axis right here this is the x axis right here is the discount rate and we start obviously with zero you're earning nothing then five percent ten percent fifteen percent twenty five so on and so forth so this is the discount rate the y axis is the MPV, the y-axis, this is the y-axis, this is the net present value figures. Now, here's what I want to show you first. When your discount rate is zero, the cost of money is zero, you make approximately 19 or 19 million or 19 dollars, it does not matter. So notice what's going to happen. As your discount rate, as the cost of money goes to 5%, obviously, your return is 10. Obviously, as the cost of money goes to 10%, your MPV is lower because higher discount rate, 3. And notice what's going to happen. At 13.07, you remember the 13.07? At this rate here, NPV, this is MPV equal to 0. So notice this is what IRR is. At 13.07, NPV equal to 0. Now, as your cost, as your discount rate goes up, as your discount rate goes up at the 15%, now you are in the negative territory. Your, 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 your MPV is zero. Therefore, now you would reject the project because your discount rate is, is just, it's not worth it because it's given you a negative MPV. When the discount rate is low, MPV is positive because there's no cost. As the discount rate increase, MPV declines. The point where MPV curves cross, crosses zero is is the IRR and I told you it's right here which is 13.07 13.07 now for discount rate below 13.07 NPV is positive meaning accept at exactly 13.07 NPV is zero the project is break even and this is the internal rate of return for discount rate above 13.07 NPV is negative the project is not worth it. Now, how to find IRR with the time value of money? You can find it as long as the cash flows are the same. We are dealing with an annuity. If we're not, then we cannot. We have to find either trial and error or go to the Excel function IRR equal open parentheses and input the information. So let's explore a practical example. Adam invest 104320. So this is the initial investment. And the machine expected to save 20,000 annually for 10 years. We are looking at an annuity. Calculate the present value factor. The present value factor is 5.216. All what I did is I took the amount that I invested divided by the payment and I find the present value factor of the annuity. This is not the answer. This is the present value factor of an annuity with 10 years. Now, all what I have to do now, I know my period is 10 years. I know I'm dealing with an annuity. I go to the present value annuity table. I'm dealing with 10 years and I go across until I find that factor. I keep going across and 5.216. So 5.216 correspond to 14%. It means the internal rate of return for this project is 14%. The only way I could do this because it's an annuity. I could use the tables. Otherwise, we cannot. So if the required rate of return is 15, I will not take this project. If the required rate of return is 13, 
I will undertake this project because this project is earning 14%. Advantages and limitation of IRR. Advantages, it accounts for the time value of money. That's important. It reflects the decline value of future cash flows. That's always important. It looks at all cash flow over the project's life. This is compared to the payback period. It does not. Limitations, well, it has a complex, complex calculation, but don't worry about this. For uneven cash flows, you could use you know, software or Excel or financial calculator. Non-conventional cash flow can yield more than one IRR, com complicating interpretation. If you have more than, uh, more than negative outflow, rather than just an initial investment, it, it might complicate uh, your decision. And we make an assumption when we do IRR, we assume that all inflows are reinvested at the same rate, which may not be true in the real world. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. In discounted cash flow analysis, which of the following demonstrate a key difference between NPV and IRR differences? The MPV method allows for the use of different hurdle rates for each year of the project. When we talk about the MPV, we said, yes, you are allowed to use different discount rate for every period. So that's the difference. One is correct. A is correct. C is correct. B is out and D is out. The MPV method is based on a discounted cash flow where the IRR method does not utilize discounted cash flow. Not true. They both use discounted cash flow. They both use discounted cash flow. Therefore, the only statement that's correct is A, statement one only. What should you do now? Whether you are a student, accounting, finance, studying for a professional certification, CPA, CMA, any other professional certification, it does not really matter. Farhat Lectures is always here to help. Visit my website for additional resources. Study hard and stay safe.